My name is Steve Turoff, and uh, originally from New York. I've uh, been living down here for 15 years, and uh, this is a 1964 Nova, which uh, I restored completely from the ground up. It's got 500 horsepower, it's a 350 motor, bored out, pushing about 500 horsepower right now. Um, it's, it's a work of beauty. It wasn't in bad shape when I first got it. And a lot of people wondered why I was doing what I was doing, but uh, this is what it turned out, and this is what the way I wanted it, so that's what I did. I used to have one when I was a kid, and uh, it didn't look this good, and now that I can afford to do it, I wanted to restore one, and here it is. I try to go to all the car shows that uh, Novas are in, uh, so we have a lot of fun with it, and it never ends. Uh, just keep keep putting money into it, and I keep putting things into it, and um, I, I love it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Well, my name is Peter Müller. I was born in Germany, where well, I cannot get any German, I guess. I lived about 20 years in South America, flew air shows in South America, and now I'm here in Florida for more than 10 years. This is where I spend my money, not where I make my money. Uh, I like to introduce uh, already professional pilots in spin recovery and emergency procedures, and that's the ideal airplane to do that. The Pitts is a, a bi-wing, this one specially was built in 80, uh, 1986. It has a positive 6G load, negative 3. That's most what normally a, a pilot can handle without special training. Uh, I would say it's basically, you cannot destruct it, destroy it uh, before you pass out, at least I can and uh, it's very, very forgiving flying. It's a beauty in the air, but on the ground, it's not a vehicle you want to be in. And it's an airplane, it has to be in the air. It's very challenging on the ground, landing and takeoff. I started with a foundation, it's called Beacon 14, you can see it on here. And uh, it's aimed for basically foster teenager who have a lack of guidance in their life and what I do I use uh, aviation charts with a lot of streaks and circles and signs that not a lot of people understand and I use that as a guidance how to find the goal in life and how to get there. The environment in aviation especially on this side of the fence on an airport is all about discipline and that's what these kids most of the time have a big lag on it. They have two or three set of parents and they're 18 years old and then they're on their own. And if I can with that project, I can avoid that one of them holds a gun at somebody's head in a gas station. That's what I want to avoid, that's what I want to do. You can email me or you can write me or you can uh, call me. My number is on here is 954-801-8801. And the email address is beacon14s at gmail.com. Jim Frawley out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. It's a 1950 Merc four-door sedan. It's got 26 Mercury options on it. Sun visor, spotlights, hood ornaments, fog lights, locking gas cap to the rear, dual exhaust, 
original hubcaps, the original interior in it. Uh, I changed the motor, that's the only thing. It's got a uh, 302 Ford motor in it. It's got original drivetrain with overdrive, original rear end into it. The paint job is, believe it or not, it's 21 years old. It sits out, it's no car cover or nothing. I use it at least twice a week, yes. I got seven other cars and uh, this is one of my favorites right here. Did you get it in this condition? or? Uh, most of it, I did the motor change on it. It had the flathead in it, it was running hot. I couldn't use it. I would shut it off, wouldn't start. I put the 302, just turn key, 12 volts. Put all the original gauges back into it. No hang down gauges in it. Hello, uh, this, my name is Rick Chavez. Uh, we're here at the Perry Airport uh, Car and Aviation Show. And uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about a 1930 Ford Model A. That's what this is. This one is the coupe, the standard coupe. And uh, it's a very colorful, as you can see. Previous to this, they had uh, the Model T's, which were, I'm not sure when they started, somewhere around uh, 1900, but they went up to 1927. And then in 1928 through 31, it was, they called it a, a uh, Model A. And uh, that's when they came out with colored cars. So in these years, they were very colorful. Uh, they're a lot of fun to drive. You get a lot of attention. Everybody's waving at you, and and uh, they enjoy looking at the car. It's uh, it's. Let me show. Let me have you hear the horn on these. And uh, you just get a lot of, of attention, and it's a lot of fun. They're a little difficult to learn how to drive in that uh, the trans. They were all. These were all standard transmissions, so you have to shift them manually. And uh, this, in this year, you had to double clutch, which means when you're going to go shift from one gear to the other, you have to push the clutch in a second time in order for it to get into gear. Uh, if you don't do that, it's very difficult to shift gears. Uh, they, uh, it has manual brakes. Uh, instead of hydraulic brakes like most people have today. Um, let's see, uh, the air conditioning is you open the windows. Uh, they don't have seat belts, and this one doesn't have it, but I'm planning to get some and get it installed. Uh, they're four cylinders. Uh, let's see, what else? They have a rumble seat, which people enjoy riding in. Um, that's about it. They're a lot of fun to have. So I encourage you, if you're into this type of thing, get a Model A. Hi, my name is Evan Kolodny. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm here today at the Perry Airport to display my car. This is a 1984 Dodge Diplomat. It has a 318 four-barrel engine, and uh, this car is a California Highway Patrol car, and it is not a clone. This has always been a police car. 
I purchased the car in 2006 and uh, been bringing it to shows and parades ever since. Uh, this car was originally owned and uh, by James Post, who is the uh, founder of a group called Police Car Owners of America. So uh, the car was bought at auction. He restored the car, put in proper equipment. Everything works in the car. The lights, the sirens, all work in the car. And uh, the, uh, I really get a lot of attention with the car, and I bring it to uh, shows and parades all over the South Florida area. Uh, I have a lot of fun with the car, particularly when I'm on the highway. In order to make this car legal and, and roadworthy, I have to put magnets on the car that say out of service, which I put on both doors. And then the trunk says highway patrol, and I cover that with black magnets. So the car is legal uh, as long as I don't turn the lights on. Uh, even if the lights are legal because they're not blue lights, they are red lights, so that's not a problem, as I said, unless, unless I should turn them on. I'm always asked why I chose a police car, and uh, as a kid I used to like playing with the little cars that had the lights, like ambulances, police cars, fire engines. I always enjoyed those. Probably would have been a lot cheaper if I stuck with the toys rather than, than buy the, the big things. This is not my only car. I also have an NYPD police car with the current markings on it. But uh, possibly also my dad uh, is uh, retired from NYPD, although he's no longer with us. He, were, he retired back in 1964. He, he was on the NYPD and the Brooklyn Homicide Squad. So I think that too is probably the reason for piquing my interest in police cars. But it's amazing when I drive this car on the road how many people the respect it gets because people are not sure whether it is a police car or not a police car in terms of giving out tickets and all. And it's amazing how many people, sometimes I drive along I-95 and it's like a parade because nobody wants to pass me. Uh, so I have a lot of fun with this car.